right, let's move on to Proposition 32. So uh, just a little background first. Uh, California has a basic statewide minimum wage uh, currently uh, set at $16 an hour, um, and that is uh, uh, adjusted annually in a way that's uh, based on U.S. inflation up to 3.5%. Um, and there also are a variety of local governments in California that set higher minimum wages. And the state also has a couple of minimum wage laws that apply to specific types of employers. So one that applies to most fast food establishments and another uh, that went into effect, I believe, this week that affects uh, certain types of health workers at certain types of healthcare facilities. And so uh, going back to that basic statewide minimum wage and the inflation adjustments, so it's uh, officially been announced to, under current law, to increase to $16.50 an hour in 2025, and we project that under current law it would then be around $17 an hour in 2026. So then what Proposition 32 would do would be to uh, accelerate those short-term increases. So rather than the statewide minimum wage being around $17 an hour in 2026, it would go up a little bit faster and hit $18 an hour in 2026 instead. And subsequently, the inflation adjustments would work exactly the same way they do under current law. So uh, sort of going forward, the statewide minimum wage would be around 5 to 8 percent higher than it would be under current law. Uh, fiscal effects, uh, the fiscal effects of Proposition 32 in large part would depend on the economic effects of the measure and so we highlight a few of the significant ones. Uh, first of all that wages for many workers would be higher uh, of course, they would need to be at least $18 an hour by 2026, but also some workers who make a bit, who would otherwise make a bit more than $18 an hour also would get a raise uh, due to the labor market effects of the measure. Um, second significant uh, economic effect would be that uh, prices of certain goods and services likely would increase sort of in terms of the overall basket of things that consumers buy the uh, overall price increases from the measure likely would total less than uh, one and a half less than one half of one percent um, profits for certain businesses likely would be lower would be the third significant economic effect and the fourth one would be an effect on employment that uh, plausibly could be uh, positive or negative in terms of the state's total jobs and likely would not, any be, not be any larger than about one quarter of one percent of the state's total employment. So with sort of those as some of the highlights of the economic effects, um, there could be a variety of fiscal effects on state and local governments and we put them into essentially three categories. The first category is that there are certain state and local government programs whose costs are directly affected by compensation for low-wage workers, and so this measure would increase those costs. Second category is uh, that due to the effects of the measure on uh, workers' incomes, uh, sort of enrollment in certain uh, health and social services programs would be lower under the measure, uh, or likely would be lower. And so combining those two pieces, there is a fair bit of uncertainty in, in the magnitude in some of them. And so on net, the effect of the measure on state and local government uh, spending uh, could be a net increase or decrease, but the net change likely would not exceed the high hundreds of millions of dollars annually. And then the third piece of the fiscal effects are the effects on state and local tax revenues. And so um, due to the measures effects on incomes for various people as well as prices, 
Um, it would affect, it likely would affect income and sales tax revenues. Um, on net, we estimate that it would reduce uh, state and local tax revenues by an amount that could total uh, perhaps as much as a few hundred million dollars annually. Great. So this got on by signatures for, on petitions. Um, so the endorsements, labor organizations, fair, One Fair Wage, Working Families Party, California, United Farm Workers, the Democratic Party, and the League of Women Voters. And then against the Chamber of Commerce, the California Restaurant Association, Grocers Association, uh, Federation of Independent Businesses, and the California Republican Party, and then Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. <laughs> the newspapers are a bit split again. Mercury News, San Francisco Chronicle, and LA Times support it. And then in opposition, the Pasadena Star News and the Bakersfield Californian. In support, we have Kevin DeLeon's campaign again. Um, that's most of the money. And then in opposition, we have uh, growers and agriculture, farmers, and um, more agriculture, and the Grocers Association again. So it's, it's a bunch of organizations that would end up paying additional wages, basically. And the funding is a little bit more matched for this one, 609 almost 610 million raised so far, and then again, $526,000. What questions do you have about Prop 32? Do we have questions amongst ourselves for Prop 32? <laughs> okay, we will move on then.